It, it's very easy to know that someone's committed a crime, but it's hard, you've got to prove it and you've got to collect the evidence. Retired policeman Jeff Gauchy spent 36 years as an investigator. Everything from shoplifters, drug-related cases, burglary, car thefts, fraud, deception cases. When you moved into here, did you ever imagine that you would be investigating this place? Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. After he retired, Jeff sold his home and bought a house at Lifestyle Communities in Wallert, Victoria. The gated community is reminiscent of a scene from The Truman Show, with rows of houses adorned with perfect lawns and impeccably clean streets. Known as land lease communities, residents buy the house and rent the land, similar to caravan parks. The $1.5 billion lifestyle communities chain houses 5,500 residents who've been lured by glossy brochures, TV ads, and powerful resident referrals. The marketing spin made everything look like Disneyland. My favourite ingredient is clinking glasses at happy hour. When did you start to get suspicious that things weren't as they seemed? I jumped on my computer and uh, started looking at the legislation. And I thought, oh, hang on a sec, there's flaws in my side agreement. Jeff began talking to other residents and realised that Lifestyle was charging a fee that some competitors don't impose. That fee is banned or highly regulated in other states. They told me a lot of times, this is within the industry standards. Everybody's doing it. So you then learn to accept it. So they'll extract every piece of money to suit their revenue by the exit fee, by the entry fee, by the ongoing weekly rentals. Jeff's biggest concern is the exit fee, a fee charged when a resident sells. The exit fee, or deferred management fee, is charged as a percentage of the final sale price, capped at 20% after five years. It means a property that sells for $500,000 after five years is charged an exit fee of $100,000. Its own brochure calculates a home bought for $650,000 and increasing to $1.2 million over seven years, will pay $237,000 in exit fees. To me, it's like I'm in a financial prison. I've got to bail myself out in order to get out. And, you know, it's just wrong. Fiona York is CEO of Housing for the Aged Action Group. She believes the way some exit fees are charged could be illegal. There's operators that want to make a buck and this is a model that is making money for them. For more than a decade, Fiona York has been fighting for better protections for older Australians living in Victorian land lease communities. We're not talking about wealthy people here, we're talking about hardworking people who have put all of their savings into their homes. Jeff worries Lifestyle's decision to keep charging exit fees when some big competitors don't will make it harder to get out. There is houses here that are still for sale. This is three years on. The general public are waking up to the fact that why would I come to Lifestyle and pay an exit fee when I can go elsewhere and get no exit fee? They are just another company that thrive on corporate greed. Thank you everyone for coming here today. I really appreciate your attendance.
Jeff decided to start a group with other concerned residents. They meet weekly. I'll introduce you to Adele Ferguson. So Adele, feel free to ask your questions as you wish. It's that nasty taste in our mouth since Jeff has brought all these things up. No, there's no compassion. A deceptive and very disappointing. So do any of you think that's a fair description that Jeff's saying, that it's it's like a financial prison? Yeah. Yes. 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 Exit fees aren't the only way lifestyle gouges residents. It charges dead people rent. Dead people are paying for the facilities and, and the use of um, electricity and water. They're not there, they're dead. When Diane passed, I asked uh, here if they could list the property for sale and they declined. Uh, they said to me that it's not in their best interest to sell the property. Why? Because they blatantly told me that they had other new homes available. How long did it take to sell? Over 12 months. Well, the rent was being still paid and no one was living in there. Being um, diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, so if shortly, or the next 12 to mm -hmm. two years, I'm going to end up in a wheelchair. We have been told by Lifestyle, there's no way you can put a ramp in the front of your house. So what have I got to do? Try and get through the garage to get up into the house once I'm in the wheelchair. It's, there's no compromise. So what's so different about our model? Our homes are super affordable, typically. Demand for affordable housing has turned the land lease sector into a booming $12 billion industry. More than 130,000 Australians over 50 live in communities like these. Many are pensioners. Land lease communities are similar to retirement villages, but the difference is that the resident owns the dwelling and leases the land that it's sitting on. But unfortunately, it's fraught with problems. Lifestyle Communities has been around for 21 years. It's listed on the ASX and is valued at $1.5 billion. Earlier this year, it raised $275 million to help fund 10 new sites to increase its network to 32 locations. Its business model is based on charging rent up to $1,000 a month for couples and exit fees, as well as selling new homes and communities. A key sales technique is tapping into residents' friendship and family circles for sales leads, offering cash and other incentives for every sale. We've referred nine people to lifestyle communities. Downsizing is just the way to go. I referred four people to lifestyle. $1,000 cash in your pocket, dinner on us, mega travel prizes, free electricity. Congratulations to our winners for an amazing seven referrals. They're off to Europe. Well done. A great reason to start referring. The main sales come from referrals. My wife and I have referred over seven people. We're aiding and abetting lifestyle to bring people into the community to sell the product. She was crying because she's so upset. That she Jeff has referred so many people, he received a free overseas holiday. Robert Humphreys put his home up for sale in 2022 and didn't find a buyer until earlier this year. And why did it take 17 months to sell it? Well, in the contract, it says Lifestyle will do everything they can to assist you to sell when it's time to come uh, to, to sell. And you don't think they did? I've got it in writing from one of the um, managers when we question about putting the home on the market. Will you assist us to sell? And he said, no. Robert hired a real estate agent, but his suspicious prospective buyers were directed to new properties, which often attract cash and other incentives. They were directed away from our home. If they'd shown any interest or indicated that they'd looked at our home that was for sale, they were told, no, you don't want that one. We've got a better one for you. What are they offering people who are buying the, the new places? Cash or vouchers, electricity, um, We've heard of one woman that was offered a cash discount of $10,000.
Robert calculated that it cost him almost $100,000 to get out of lifestyle, including $63,000 in exit fees, short-term rental and home improvements, wiping out most of his capital gain. And in your late 60s, you never get that back. The business model is just broken and um, it's um, just not a happy environment for luxury living. Industry Super Fund, Australian Super, has a close relationship with Lifestyle, owning almost 15% of the company and for years has occupied a seat on Lifestyle's board, most recently as chair. A key role of any board is to ensure a company properly manages its risk and reputation. It begs the question how Australian Super's responsible investment policy fits with a company now accused of gouging its residents. In a statement, Australian Super told us, We have engaged with the company and believe they are focused on addressing the issues raised in a consistent and considered manner. At an investor conference in May, Lifestyle said it is targeting single retired women labelling them Miss Lonely, Miss Homely and Miss Active. It said tactical marketing would target her right between the eyes. Lifestyle wouldn't talk to us on camera, but said it regretted using this type of language. It said its focus is the customer and it complies with the law. It said exit fees were common across the sector and it doesn't make money from developing a site which keeps new home prices low. But most importantly, our fees and charges are also really, really reasonable. And this is a bit unique about what lifestyle community has brought to the market over the years. And there's one or two other pieces of information that we should have got, but we never got. Jeff Gauchy is taking lifestyle to the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal, which hears cases about property disputes. 80 residents have also lodged claims. I think it's fantastic that they're taking action in VCAP for every person that does have the time and the patience and the strength to go to VCAT, there's a whole lot of other people that are, that are suffering in silence. Fiona York's organisation took another land lease operator to VCAT in 2018 and won. She believes companies that charge exit fees on the future sale price of dwellings isn't legal in Victoria. What we're seeing is deferred management fees that are being charged on the future sale price of the dwellings, which is not legal under the Residential Tenancies Act. But for a person to fight that, there's no adequate dispute resolution. They have to have lengthy court processes through VCAT. And the, of the cases that we do mo know, most of them settle out of court in confidential agreements, which means that um, other residents won't benefit from that. The Residential Tenancies Act was reformed in 2010, but unfortunately there really hasn't been much reform since then. Lifestyle said many homeowners disagree with the current action at its Willert community and said it would be resolved in a legal setting. My concerns are, is that when I die, and um, so my children, they put it on the market and it could take two years to sell. It could take three. So why would somebody want to buy in here when they can go down the road and buy one with no deferred fees. So ours will just sit here and sit here and sit here and keep they'll keep charging rent and by the time maybe they sell it, there'll be nothing for my children. Now we're stuck in this financial prison. It's just made us all realise that we are trapped, you know. Technically we are trapped. <laughs>